In today's video, how I use this to go from looking like this to looking like this. And I'm gonna explain should it be used for you. Hey guys, what's going on? This is Paul Ravello from ProPhysique.com and today I got a topic that I get asked quite a bit about and that is the use of non-nutritive sweeteners, things like sucralose and things that are used as a replacement for sugar to sweeten beverages. And I think also when I'm looking at something like a diet soda, like a diet Mountain Dew, there's also some other things in there like caffeine. And we're gonna discuss the topic of should you be using this in your fat loss goals? And I'm gonna give you guys some research. I'm gonna show you some studies. I'm also gonna talk about my experiences with and without them. And um, yeah, we're gonna really dig in and you can make a really informed decision for yourself. Now today's question does come from my Instagram direct message. So if you're not following my Instagram, you're not sending me direct messages, this is where I prefer to get my messages from you guys. Of course, you can leave comments below. I try to reply to all the comments as well. So let's talk about the question that I got. How do you, and your athletes manage anxiety around non-nutritive sweeteners. On one hand, they can be great for satisfying cravings. They're palatable. They can also intensify cravings. There are also new studies all the time about microbiome, metabolism, etc., that seem to show very different outcomes. And this is before even getting into the fact that every compound is different. The naturalistic fallacy with some, I could but won't go on. So this is a great question. And it's honestly one of the topics that I find to be kind of most polarizing, right? Diet soda is clearly very bad for you, but is it, right? And so I come from the approach that I certainly include diet sodas into my lifestyle. You know, I definitely have a couple per day typically. Um, and so I wanted to give you guys my perspective on why I feel they're beneficial. Um, first things first, I don't have any fear or anxiety around diet soda, okay? I've never worried about them. And so if you are anxious or have anxiety around something, I would avoid it completely, okay? If I'm if I'm anxious about something, I resolve that. I don't want constant anxiety. So I don't wanna be eating something that I'm worried about um, or consuming something that I'm worried about. So if you have read some studies and you have looked into some things and you feel they are not right for you, by all means, I would suggest that is right for you but that's a decision we gotta make for ourselves. I, on the other hand, find that if you fit them into a nice lifestyle approach, that they work. And I think most of the research that I've come across that paints diet sodas in a bad light, they are studies that do observation, right? They are not metabolic studies, human randomized studies, they're observational studies. And what do I mean by that? It means they look at a population of people that drinks a lot of diet soda and they go, oh, there is an association with people that drink diet soda with heart disease, metabolic issues. But the observational studies are the people that more typically consume diet sodas are already overweight, are trying to switch to lower calorie lifestyles. And it's not necessarily people that are living a lifestyle like I am, where I am doing cardio every day. I am tracking my macronutrients. I am going to the gym. I am playing sports, okay? So for me, I'm including diet sodas into an already healthy lifestyle. I'm not trying to replace something or I'm not obese, I am not unhealthy. And then the correlation is, oh, unhealthy people drink diet soda. I think we can all, you know, think of the image of someone going to McDonald's and getting, you know, a large fry, two Big Macs and a diet soda and thinking, well, that's kind of silly that's if they're never eating all those calories. But I actually completely disagree with that because if they were to have a regular soda there, we're talking about a few hundred extra calories that is going to have an impact on body composition. And this is where my philosophy lies. Your body composition, your lifestyle is going to dictate what is healthy for you. Whenever I see someone demonizing something like seed oils or carbohydrates or sugar or diet soda, I say, welcome to my life. I live on those things, but this is, how I look and feel every single day. I feel amazing. Guys, I'm 49 years old. I'm a lifetime natural bodybuilder and I treat my lifestyle very well so that the inclusions of those things that I just mentioned are not gonna have a negative impact on me because they're just a small percentage of what I do, okay? So I'm gonna put a study here on the screen for you where they actually followed people for an entire year. The, the interesting thing about this study is they had two groups, one group that was consuming water one group that was consuming 24 ounces of non-nutritive sweeteners beverages per day. Well, after one year, what they found was 
the group that was including the diet sodas, let's call them, actually lost more weight and maintains more weight loss than the group that just added water. Now, does this mean that diet soda is better for you than water? Absolutely not. But what it might mean is that this diet soda was actually helping people with their cravings, maybe appetite suppression. And this is where I find the value in diet soda. Okay, now, when I talked to you earlier about me getting shredded, and I've been more shredded than anybody that watches this channel, and it is challenging to get that low in body fat. And there are some psychological things that start to happen to you, like you get really hungry in between your meals, and your body starts to go, well, we're too lean right now, we need to put on body fat. What I found was that by having a diet soda in between some of my meals, I would no longer be hungry. It would give me the sweetness or some type of taste, the carbonation, the caffeine. These combination of factors for whatever reason would allow me to avoid eating and snacking for several hours until I was planning to eat my next meal. Now, I typically eat three to four meals a day. I'm not someone that you know believes you need to be having a ton of meals or you should only have one meal. I like to find balance. I like to live my life as normally as possible while working towards my goals. And I found that diet soda to be very beneficial for that. There's also something that I'm gonna explain that you should probably think about when it comes to these beverages. Do you enjoy them? I do. A couple times a day, I say, you know what sounds good to me? I like my white monsters. I like my diet Mountain Dews. I like my Coke Zeros. I enjoy them, and so I include them. I also enjoy iced tea. I also drink plenty of water. I also still have my pre-workout, which has caffeine and things in it. So I'm consuming kind of fluids around the day. Guess what? I also have coffee in the morning, which I put my Splenda in. That's my preferred uh, sweetener of choice. Now, for anyone out there that's worried about the research behind artificial sweeteners causing health problems, listen, it's very real. And if that's something that's a consideration for you, I certainly think you should take it seriously. However, I've seen zero evidence that small amounts of artificial sweeteners are negatives, okay? Now, does that mean it's better for you than another? I think you gotta try it for yourself. And so um, I certainly start to with my clients. Now I'm coaching competitors who are typically trying to get down to much lower body fat levels. You know, when we're trying to figure out ways to get through the day, not deal with hunger, I think this is certainly a solution. But I think what we deal with right now, especially with social media, is it's easy to just demonize anything that has chemicals. Guys, everything we eat has chemicals. Everything we drink has chemicals, okay? So to demonize chemicals is I think a little bit short-sighted. And to be fair, I think a lot of people will look beyond and just say, well, they aren't healthy because they're not natural. Fair, if that's what you believe, However, I believe our bodies are very dynamic, okay? I have no digestive issues associated with drinking diet soda. I have no weight loss or weight management or muscle building issues with drinking diet soda. So my own personal experience has been very positive, as well as the thousands of people that I've coached over the years have had a very positive experience and I have had no issues. Now, when and where to add them, that is gonna be up to you. But the nice thing about these is they are zero calories and ultimately, what is going to determine your success is your accountability to your calories. Now, if you haven't used my calorie tracking app, that's free, prophysique.com slash calculator, you can go there and kind of get your numbers. That's what's gonna determine your success. And there is also something nice about having a drink that I don't have to track. Zero calories, zero impact to my caloric intake, my energy expenditure throughout the day. And heck, if it's got a little caffeine, maybe I burn a few extra calories because of it. But, but the idea here for me is that I'm looking at the big picture. How many protein, carbs, and fats am I taking in? If you don't even know that, and you're worried about seed oils, if you're worried about artificial sweeteners, if you're worried about diet soda, I think you're stepping over dollars to pick up nickels, okay? Worry about your sleep, your training, your recovery, your diet before all those things. And then guess what, guys? I can have as much sugar as it fits my goals. I can have as much artificial sweeteners as it fits my goals. And there are zero negative consequences for me, okay? If you wanna talk about you know, blood sugar and insulin and all these things, diet soda is not gonna have an impact to that, okay? And same thing with, with even with sugar having an impact to your insulin, it's not gonna negatively impact your fat loss if you're creating caloric deficit, if you're living a lifestyle. So you guys gotta understand my big picture thinking. I don't get caught up in the minutia, why? Because I've been lifting weights for over 30 years, okay? I've been taking care of my physique and I've learned a lot. I've tried it all. Believe me when I say, I tried the no diet soda. I tried to be the super clean eating. Guess what? 
The outcomes were actually worse for me. It created disordered thinking for me. I started thinking of food as good and bad. This food's on the good list. This food's on the bad list. You're gonna hear me say this all the time, guys. There are no bad foods. Some foods might not be beneficial for weight loss, but they might be beneficial because you fucking like them and you enjoy them. And sometimes I think that gets missed. Food is not just meant for your health outcomes. It is a part of our life. And listen, I think it's great if you wanna be orthorexic and, and stick to the same six foods for the rest of your life. I don't want that, guys. I wanna enjoy my life. I wanna really go through this experience and get the most out of it. And hey, I'm proven to myself that I can do that and still look and feel the way I wanna feel at any age. So hopefully this answers your question. If you got anxiety, avoid it. Otherwise, I think it's a great addition to any approach. In fact, I'm gonna go have a white monster and go to the gym right now.